Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some hate to love romance recommendations for you. Now I do use the term hate to love instead of enemies to lovers because I feel like enemies to lovers is like full on mortal enemies. Like that's what I think about with enemies to lovers. This one is more like hate to love. I don't like you very much. You know what I mean? It's not as intense as enemies to lovers. Like enemies to lovers is literally like, I want to murder you. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that kind, like serious, like enemies. Okay. So these ones are like rivals or I don't like you or you annoy me or something along the lines. So hate to love. They don't like the other person to lovers. So Let's get into these 10 recommendations. I'll leave all my previous rec videos down below for you. And if you are wanting enemies to lovers, I do have a rec video for that as well. I'll link that down below if you want that. But anyways, let's get into these 10 books. First, I have The Co-op by Tara DeWitt. This is about Lauren and Deacon. So they were actually like all over each other as teens. They were hooking up, getting together. Um, but then something happens where the two of them are caught and they shouldn't really be together. Um, and they have not spoken since and they actually really don't like each other. Their grandmothers, however, were like best friends and they owned this house together. And when they died, their respective grandmothers gifted the house to the grandkids. And so Lorraine and Deacon both own, half own this house. And um, they are planning on remodeling it, redoing it and selling it for a higher profit. Both of them don't have anywhere else to stay except for the house. And so they have to live in this house together when they actually do not like each other like at all. And obviously through them spending all this time together, the forced proximity, okay, they end up falling in love. I really loved this one because you get to see the slow progression of rivals to lovers and a lot of hate to love or enemies to lovers books, they're promoted as enemies to lovers and you only get the dislike part for a short period of time and then it switches to lovers and I personally need that progression I need those little moments of characters being like oh you know what I mean like throughout their connection I don't I don't want just a switch flipped I don't need that I don't want that I want to see the progression I want to see the love grow and this book definitely have that I also forgot to mention too the only way she can get her trust fund Lauren can get her trust fund because she's broke is to get married so the two of them also have to get married while not liking each other so <laughs> fun raid great one if you want a good rival slovers look no further actor age eve brown by talia hibbert oh i love this one so much this is about eve and jacob eve is basically a trust fund baby she's been living off her parents for a while her parents are kind of sick of it because she keep, keeps jumping and hopping to different jobs quitting getting fired whatever the case may be and they basically tell her okay if you keep a job for either like six months or a year, I can't remember the timeline, um, we will give you your trust back. But right now you are cut off. You need a stable job for a long amount of time. She's driving around after this conversation and she ends up driving by a bed and breakfast that has like a help wanted sign for a chef. And she's like, I think I can do that. Immediately pulls in very spur of the moment decision, right? So Jacob is the owner of the bed and breakfast and he is obviously trying to hire more people there, specifically a chef. Jacob is the owner of the bed and breakfast. And from the moment that Eve walks into the room where he's interviewing people, he doesn't really like her. <laughs> um, she came in soaking wet from the rain, wearing this graphic t-shirt. He's like, that is not appropriate. That is not interview attire. <laughs> And she also doesn't even have a resume on her. And he's like, what, what is this woman doing here? Like she's wasting my time. <laughs> but after Eve walks out of the interview, Jacob's like telling his friend that he's with, like, we cannot hire her. Like, no, his friend's like, you have nobody. You need a chef. She looks qualified, sounds qualified. Let's just give her a chance and see like if she can make really good food. And he's like, oh, fine. And so he goes out to go basically apologize and tell her to come back. And, uh, in the parking lot, she may or may not accidentally hit Jacob with her car. He's like bedridden after that. And so Eve kind of like invites herself into his home in the bed and breakfast because he lives there and is gonna take care of him. Already adopts the role as chef because she feels 
awful about hitting him with her car. <laughs> so they don't really get off on the right foot. She literally hits him with her car. It's an accident though. Okay, she doesn't do it on purpose. <laughs> but yeah, these two are great. I loved Jacob in here. There is autism representation in this book. He's autistic and um, Eve may or may not be figuring out whether or not she's autistic as well. So I just loved that representation. These two are so stinking cute. And the way that you get to see Jacob's heart soften for this chaotic woman, was totally swoony. If you want a romantic suspense, I recommend the first book in the Tattered and Torn series by Katherine Cowles. This is Tattered Stars. This is about Hayes and Everly. Hayes has never really liked Everly. Everly doesn't really like Hayes because he doesn't like her. So Everly's family, her father is a part of this cult essentially. And he was not right in the head, like mentally, and ended up kidnapping Hayes's little sister when um when they were both when everyone was kids when Everly Hayes and his little sister were all kids Everly knows that this is wrong and this girl's been missing for days no one knows where she is she knows where Everly is she ends up getting on her horse in the middle of the night and riding the horse all the way into town and telling the police basically ratting her dad out there's a girl in the barn locked up in the barn please save her life Everly in here basically saves Hayes little sister but Hayes hates her father after what he did. He's in jail now. This book takes place years later after that occurrence and he just still cannot get over what her father did. Everly moved out of the town when she went off to college um, but she's now back. She inherited her house from her mother. Um, she now lives in this small town again in Wolf Gap and um, she really wants to fix up the property that she inherited to make it into an animal sanctuary. Um, and Hayes is now the sheriff of the town and he figures out that Everly is back in town and he is not really happy about it. Everly and his whole family is trying to show him like Everly is not her father. Everly is not the cult that her family was a part of. Please do not blame her for her father's sins essentially. And from the moment he goes to confront Everly for moving back to this small town, he's starting to realize that. He's starting to realize like this woman is not who I thought she was. That's my bad. Um, and they're out there bickering and bantering and get to know one another all over again, they end up falling in love. There's also a suspense element in here too. Fun book, great start to a great series. I've talked about this book quite a lot, but it's a fun read. Okay, this is Battle Royal by Lucy Parker. This one takes place in the UK. Our heroine of the story, Sylvie, was on a show. Basically, think Great British Baking Show, okay? And I think his name's Donovan, right? No, Dominic, I'm sorry. Dominic was one of the judges, okay? And uh, she gets voted off the show after one of her cakes like explodes everywhere. <laughs> um, but she doesn't win the show, but she ends up getting her own bakery afterward anyway. And it's actually right across the street from Dominic's. If you can see like hers is this bright pink sparkly cupcake bakery shop and his is this pristine white bakery, okay? And they are very well known throughout the UK right now with their bakeries. And there's actually a royal engagement happening and they're going to compete to see who could make the royal wedding cake. Um, and through them rivaling against each other to make this cake, they end up getting to know one another, obviously. Falling in love, typical for um, hate to love romances. <laughs> um, but these two are definitely like rivals. Sylvie thinks that Dominic is very buttoned up and straight laced and takes himself too seriously. Whereas Dominic thinks that Sylvie is off the wire, cannot rein herself in. Obviously when they get to know one another, they figure out like, oh, that was just her first impressions. Like there's way more to this person. This book will definitely make you hungry <laughs> and want like all the cake in the entire world. So make sure you have a snack when you pick this one up. I'll quickly mention another Tully Hibbert book. This is Undone by the Ex-Con. It's one of her lesser known books. It's book two in the Just For Him series, which is, I think, Talia's first series or one of her first series if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if you can even purchase this book anymore. I don't know. I listen to it through audio through my library and through Anyplay. I think these books are on Anyplay. This is about Lizzie and Isaac. They don't really get off on the right foot <laughs> at all. So Lizzie is a type one diabetic and she is a ballerina. She had to resign from her position in the ballet because her body just was not cooperating with her. Um, she was getting very ill and so she actually ends up getting a job as being a private dance tutor for this very wealthy family. The dad of the family is blackmailing her to get to know Isaac, a family friend, to get to know him more or else like he'll leak some stuff that should not be leaked out into the world that she doesn't want to that will definitely hurt a family member. So she has to get close to Isaac who is actually an ex-con and she definitely judges him at first about the fact that he's an ex-con and 
he judges Lizzie at first as well because of the family that she's working for. Um, but obviously they figure out like there's more to their stories and they fall in love. It's a short, quick read. Ashley Parker Doesn't Fail by Ashley Herring Blake is a, another one. Ashley is one of the heroines of the story. We got to read about her in book one where she had basically a failed engagement. Her fiance was awful. Um, and she really wants to redo this house um, like the Everwood house or whatever. And it's going to be on like an HGTV show, essentially of her remodeling this giant house. Um, but she has a little bit of a hard time <laughs> with this remodel because, um, Jordan is the other heroine of the story. Um, she is the granddaughter to the owner of the Everwood and she really does not want it to be changed all that much. Um, because she has grown up in this house her whole life and finds so much charm in it. She's trying to keep that charm while also making sure it's safe for other people to live in because it's kind of falling down. And so the two really butt heads with like their creative differences. <laughs> they don't really understand the other person and what they see in each other's design. But obviously they fall in love with each other. There's obviously also a reality TV show aspect. The fact that it's on an HGTV show and they have to play up this rivaling thing going on between them on TV. But behind the scenes, they're starting to fall for each other and actually start like loving and being in a relationship, um, which means they're kind of like lying to the camera when the camera's on. The Mistletoe Motive by Chloe Lisa. Oh my gosh, this one is so cute. If you want a little holiday read, um, I know the holiday season is very soon. So please pick this one up if you haven't yet, especially if you love books. This one takes place in a bookshop. The hero and the heroine both work at this bookstore. They don't like each other. This is the Bailey bookstore and the Baileys, the owners come up to them and is like, I'm so sorry, we're probably gonna have to like let y'all go after the holiday season because we just can't afford it anymore. We're kind of losing business. We might have to shut down the bookstore in general if we can't get enough. The two of them really don't want this bookstore to go under. They really love the bookstore. So they come up with this bet, if you will. Whoever can sell the most books by Christmas Eve will keep the job. Whoever doesn't resigns. And so they have this betting war going on, trying to sell more books than the other person. It's really cute, really sweet. There's autism representation with the heroine and um, type one diabetes representation with the hero. So great, diverse read. Just got a notification on my phone. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, great read. If you're looking for a unique romance that incorporates like mythology, I definitely recommend For the Love of the Gods by Rory L. Scott. This one is really unique. So essentially you have the Greek and Roman gods in our world, but they also have like kind of like their own world. I don't really know how to describe it. It's very interesting though. And so the god and goddess of the underworld, they're like the descendants of them um, in both Greek and Roman mythology have to get married and they absolutely hate each other. So it's Dominic Pluto and Rose Hades have to get married even though they absolutely despise each other because the fates deemed it so. The fates have told them that they are fated to be together. They have their reasons for hating one another. I don't want to get too deep into it. I don't want to spoil anything but it definitely gets complicated when these two gods who absolutely hate each other have to be married and unite their two households. It's really unique. I've never really read anything like it. Pestilence by Laura Thalassa. I feel like leans more towards the enemies to lovers category, but I'll just include it here. These two absolutely hate each other. Pestilence is one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse trying to like take over the world and like kill the world essentially. So um, he's basically the plague four horsemen, you know what I mean? Um, spreads plague everywhere. And the heroine of this story is gonna take one for the team and try and kill Pestilence. And she thinks she's been successful, thinks she's done it, has blown him up and everything, let him on fire. Um, but she doesn't know that Pestilence cannot die. He comes back to life and is going to get revenge on this woman who tried to kill him, did kill him, but he came back to life. Um, so he's going to strap her to the back of his horse, drag her along and have her watch him murder a bunch of people essentially, kill like the human race. He's like, this is gonna be the perfect revenge. She's gonna suddenly wipe out her people. And whoo, it gets, it gets dark at times. It gets graphic. It's very emotional at times as well. So like, please be aware of that. But in the midst of all of that, they end up falling for each other. Pestilence like grows in love. Like he's never experienced love in his life. And he's realizing like he has love for this meek little human woman who's not actually meek. She's very strong, but like compared to him, meek. <laughs> and the heroine is dealing with this inner battle of like, how am I falling in love with 
This man who's literally killing the human race, like how, like I must be twisted in the head. But she just can't help herself. She cannot help herself. So um, I'm gonna leave you with that. I really enjoyed this one. I really need to read the other books in the series. I also wonder if they're like, like enemies to lovers ones. Let me know. Anyway, I need to read the rest. My last book is a historical romance. One of my favorite books of the year is Lady Ruthless by Scarlet Skye. This is about Lord Sin and Lady Calliope. So Lord Sin is very upset okay um there has been this newspaper pamphlet that's been going out for a while called the many sins of lord sin basically talking about all of the debauched horrible sinful things that lord sin has done but he's not writing this column at all he is not the author of it people think that he is and are reading about him killing people and doing horrible things and he's like this isn't me i'm not doing this so all of the ton have basically like put him in a box and shoved him away and he like they don't want anything to do with him but in actuality he hasn't done those things like people are making up like this person is making up rumors about him and people are believing them and he can't find a wife he's like i need a wife i need someone to marry what is going on so he ends up tracking down who's been writing all these and finds out it's a lady calliope so what does he do in retaliation he kidnaps her brings her to one of his estates in the middle of nowhere and it's basically like you're going to be chained to this bed and stuck here until you agree to be my wife because no one else will marry me and you owe me for ruining my reputation, essentially. So I'll leave it at that. <laughs> they despise one another. Like, do not like each other. Like, they have their reasons, okay? You obviously know his reasons, but you don't know hers yet. You'll, you'll find out when you read the book. But this book is so fantastic. Please read if you have not yet. I think it's on Audible Plus. If you have Audible Plus, you can listen to this book for free if you have an Audible subscription. So really recommend it. Anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 romances with the hate to love trope. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the um, angry face emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.